U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley was the last member of the Security Council to speak at Wednesday's emergency meeting on the Idlib chemical attack. She reminded everyone what brought them there. We saw rows of lifeless bodies, some still in diapers, some with visible scars of a chemical weapons attack. Look at those pictures. We cannot close our eyes to those pictures. At the beginning of the meeting, diplomats learned no one knows for certain what was used to kill dozens of people in Khan Sheikhoun. If confirmed, this would constitute the single largest chemical weapons attack in the Syrian Arab Republic since the attack in eastern Ghouta in August 2013. That didn't stop the UK from accusing Syria of committing war crimes and from accusing its patron Russia of letting the carnage happen. Assad humiliates Russia by showing just how empty Syria's promise was to remove all its chemical weapons. Syria dismissed the allegations. Baseless, politicized accusations were leveled against my country Syria and its allies in our war against terror. This was the case since day one, as the media have reported information that is provided by terrorist groups that are designated by the council, especially in Khan Sheikhoun. Before the meeting, France, the U.S. and the U.K. circulated a draft resolution that would require the Syrian military to reveal what it did on the day of the Idlib attack. The deputy Russian ambassador told the Security Council the Idlib victims were either injured or killed when a Syrian military airstrike destroyed an enemy chemical weapons storehouse. He then called the draft resolution a waste of time. All of this clearly has a provocative character. It's meant to provoke. And all of this, unfortunately, has been reflected in the resolution. This draft was prepared in a hasty way and not thoroughly at all. So to approve, to adopt a text like that would not be very serious for the Security Council. Nikki Haley's response, what could be read as a threat. When the United Nations consistently fails in its duty to act collectively, there are times in the life of states that we are compelled to take our own action. But no one in the Trump administration is willing to say that the U.S. is prepared to take unilateral action, at least not right now. Rosalind Jordan, Al Jazeera, at the United Nations.